so your fair value gaps are now working. Well, lucky for you, by the end of this lesson, you will have no problem identifying the highest quality of fair value gaps by cutting two candles and looking at overlaps. But before we get started, let's brush up on the basics of a fair value gap. So what is a fair value gap? A fair value gap is a point where the market is imbalanced and only being offered on the dominant side. The empty gap, where the wicks don't connect the surrounding candle, this is where your fair value gap is. And price will seek this level in search of balancing out. So after collecting data on 2023 price action, what I realized is fair value gaps now hold better when the order flow is one directional. So in this case, you can see your formation is all bullish. There's no bearish candles, and this would be a valid fair value gap. Now look at this instant. You have a bearish candle, then two bullish candles. Even though you still have a gap, this would be an invalid fair value gap because the order flow is now one directional. So in this example, we're going to be focusing on this fair value gap. Why this fair value gap and not the one right above it? Because of the one directional order flow. As you can see here, you have three candles all in the same direction, where in the second fair value gap, you have a bearish candle where you have a bullish candle, another bullish candle, and one bearish candle. And this will make it an inconsistent order flow. So now you see price reacted from your fair value gap. But where exactly did it react from? And this is where the overlapping technique comes in. We look through your candle and see where did price react from. A lot of times we are looking at a shelf. And these are the fair value gaps we'll be focusing on. So in this example, we're going to be focusing on this fair value gap. But where do we expect price to reject in this fair value gap? Which exact point? Again, you this is your shelf. So you had a swing low right here and a swing high right here before price broken. So this would be your shelf. So knowing that, we would expect a rejection inside of this fair value gap right here. And where would your TP and stop loss be? So what you want to do is you want to pull out your FIP, of course, broken into quarters, and you will pull out the high of your shelf and the low of your shelf. And what can happen here is price can come up to your entry and drop back down here. But once price comes back to the discounted level, we don't know if price can find more buy orders in this area to shoot up higher or if it's going to continue down. We don't know that for certain. So you'd always want your first TP, at least your partial TP, to be in your discounted level. So now, where would your stop loss be? Your stop loss would be at the top of your gap. Why would it be at the top of your gap? Because if price now comes up here and fills this area, it's more than likely inclined to make a minor pullback just to start seeking the extreme level, which would be your premium or even seek somewhere right here with your rejection point to drop down or even target the liquidity. So again, you would want a conservative stop loss. So in this example, we'll be looking at this gap. And when you cut through the candles and you look to the left, you'll see that there is no significant rejection level or a shelf. So what does this tell us? This tells us that this is not a fair value gap. This is a volume gap, which price will eventually eat up instead of rejecting from and will more than likely target the order block beneath it. So after learning this, a misconception that you might have is every fair value gap with a perfect formation and a perfect shelf works. Now, again, the probabilities are in your favor, but there is something that can stop this. Now, let's say price comes down here to your fair value gap and rejects. And then drops down. This micro rejection here makes this fair value gap invalid. Why? Because we want a clean contact. We want price to come down here. Once price approaches this level, directly come to our point of interest, which would be our overlap with our shelf. We don't want price to come down here, use our fair value gap and reject and then come down. This will make it invalid. So again, you want price to maybe hover around here, then directly attack our point of interest to expand. 
So looking at these two examples, you have your fair value gap here and another one here. Tell me why both of these are invalid. I'll give you a second. Let's start off with this one. When it comes to this one, it is obvious. It's not a consistent order flow. So you had a red candle here, then a green candle here and a green candle here. So again, if this was a green candle, this would be valid and this would be your shelf. But the fact that this wasn't a green candle and was a red candle, this is inconsistent order flow. So this is why this will be invalid and this will more than likely be a gap. So here you have your perfect fair value gap as far as optics goes. You have a green candle here and a green candle here and a green candle in the middle. So this is your perfect fair value gap. But why is this one invalid? Let's zoom out and take a look. It's because you already had a reaction right here. Now, again, you do have a shelf right here. This is your shelf and this is the point where you expected price to react from. But price already reacted from this level. As you can see, price came down here, reacted from this level and came up. So even if price comes back down here, this reaction is no longer valid because price already visited this fair value gap. So what does this tell us now? This tells us that these areas are more than likely gaps. And if price does come down here and closes below this level of the previous interaction, price will more than likely continue from here all the way down here or at least fill up this level. So you have your short term bias. So looking at this quote unquote perfect fair value gap, why is this fair value gap invalid? Again, take a closer look. Why is this fair value gap invalid? Well, let's mark out our shelves. This is our macro shelf. And this is our micro shelf. Why is this our micro shelf? In case you're confused, this is your last swing high before your swing low that formed the break of structure. So this wick right here is your last swing high on lower time frames. So these are your only two shelves. So still, what makes this fair value gap invalid? If you take a closer look, both of these shelves contacts have been made. As you can see here, price already contacted this level as it formed the fair value gap. And same with this shelf right here. Price already made contact with this shelf. So this just tells us that there is no shelf in this fair value gap and price will more than likely drop down, come up looking for liquidity somewhere in this area to then completely close below. That's if the initial contact is even made. Hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Make sure you like, share and subscribe and make sure you use code holidays for 25% off everything on the website.